Hello everyone, we're just going to start with the raising of our flag here for our 35th year of Scalacla and John Twin McNamara is going to raise it and Michael Flix Lavelle is going to play the pipes for us. And this is how our area has started for the last 35 years, so we're delighted to continue it today. Hello and welcome everyone to today's area. Um, it's wonderful that the shower has passed and I hope it will stay dry for the duration of today's very special event, uh, which is the book launch by Mary J. Murphy. Um, so we're going to start um, our proceedings, but Mary J. has a bookshop set up here behind me uh, for anyone who'd like to buy a signed copy of the book. And we also have some Scalacla merchandise for sale uh, for anyone who'd like some as well. It's a very different year and thank you for socially distancing and for spreading out here in the car park. We want to keep everyone as safe as possible. Um, we'll try and get through proceedings, but um, we'll see how it goes with the weather. <laughs> so uh, we're going to finish off with some music at the end. Uh, we have some local musicians here to play at the end as well. So um, we'll start today's proceeding with um, uh, an introduction from uh, John F. Dean, who was born here in Ackle and is an Irish poet and novelist. And John has been very kind and supportive and generous with his time to Mary J. in her writing of this book. And uh, John F. Dean said of this book that this book looks quite wonderful and it will be treasured in Ackle and much further afield. So uh, I'll leave you over now to John F. Dean. And uh, thank you very much, John. You can go here to the right hand side and uh, he can tell you a little bit more about uh, Mary and her wonderful book. Thank you, John. It's a bit wet, I was told. Um, I thought it would be far wetter than this, so this is a beautiful summer's day for Ackle Island. It's it's great to be here. I'm keeping this fairly generalized talk um, and the others can do more detailed stuff. If I was to give a kind of a title to this, I'd give a very old-fashioned one. I'd call this talk The Horn of Plenty. I grew up on Ackle until I was 17 years of age. And I took this place and its people in those years for granted. It was only later in life that I began to know how much I had loved and still love every inch of this island and of its people. Towards the end of uh, Mary J. Murphy's book, um, Ackle Painters and Island History, she quotes from a recent poem of mine that's in the book, and these few lines which I wrote about from here back to Kim. And I'm imagining I'm dead. And this is what I would like to be doing in my afterlife. I could perhaps spend all there is of afterlife walking the road between Dua village and the beach at Kim, flexing the spirit muscles, 
strengthening the spirit bones. And down comes the rain, even in the afterlife. Right here. So they continue. And I looked up the word cornucopia in Wikipedia, and I got this definition. In classical antiquity, the cornucopia was known as the horn of plenty. It was a symbol of abundance and nourishment, a horn-shaped container that used to overflow in the autumn with produce, flowers, vegetables, and nuts. The book that we are actually launching and talking about today is therefore a kind of a cornucopia. It's full of history, full of flowers, uh, it's also full of nuts. But um, we will not talk too much about the nuts part of it, if that's all right. The other word that I would use would be uh, a treasure chest. It is actually a treasure chest of the history of Ackle Island uh, in great and beautiful detail. It is as well the history of, mainly the history of the painters who have come to Ackle over the years. And at this stage, you could almost say over the centuries they have been coming to Ackle and enjoying it, um, enjoying the variety of the place that, in case you hadn't noticed, will shift suddenly from beautiful sunny afternoon into a slightly damp afternoon into a storm and then back into peace and quiet. Though the peace and quiet is not often to be noticed. There is another word that I would call this book and it's in that sense very very useful to me. An aid memoir. Um, in other words, a thing to help your memory. And those of us who are getting a little bit older than we were when we were younger than we are now need an aid memoir. Um, so it is, this book is actually full of so many details that bring back to me so many of the things that I didn't know I had already known. One of the main ones, and I've written a poem about it, which I was going to read, but I will actually wait until the book comes out uh, when the rain stops and you can read it yourself. But it was when I was young and living in Bonacurry in the house uh, at the corner, the grove. My parents used to hold poker evenings. And I was very small. I used to come down the stairs and listen outside the door uh, of what we call the parlor. And there were wonderful sounds of clinking glasses coming from there and turf fire falling and laughter going on. And I remember in particular that there was uh, Father Quinn from Ackle Sound. He was the parish priest at the time. There was, as far as I remember, a man called Jim Cassidy, who used to be the chemist over here in Keele. And there was the Dr. King at the time, Ned King. And they used to be in there playing poker and I, instead of being fast asleep in my bed, used to be sitting, just listening uh, to what was going on there. And of course, wondering. I know there was sherry. I know there was whiskey. I know there was smoking. Um, all of which I have obviously been taken up uh, since I grew up a little bit. Things like that actually do, from this book, come back to me and help. Uh, I spent a semester in Chicago recently teaching in Loyola University and during weekends Ursula and I used to take trips around Chicago and out of Chicago and one day we visited the Art Institute in Chicago and discovered on the wall two wonderful paintings by a man called Robert Henry. One of them was of an elderly Ackle man, and this side was an elderly Ackle woman, beautifully painted. The title of this one was Himself, and this one was Herself. 
and it was Ackle Island for me in Chicago. Um, Mary J mentions um, Paul Robert Henry in the book. To be distinguished from Paul Henry, who is very strongly represented, of course, as a painter here. Ursula and I took a trip north once to Milwaukee and discovered a beautiful art gallery on the lake, Lake Michigan. And in there, once again, Robert Henry and children of Ackle being uh, displayed. There is this kind of thing happening all over the place. In Mary J's book, she catches all of it in great detail. Up there above uh, was the house where Captain Major Freer had made me do the sword dance. He put uh, two swords, real swords, on the floor. I was maybe eight or ten, and I had to dance around them. Um, and I did. And only the reminder of the book brought this back to me. I came away, as you can see, with my two feet intact, but it could have been far more serious. So really all I want to say about Mary Jay's book is that it is a treasure chest. It is a cornucopia. It is an aid memoir. And in itself, it is a very beautiful book to handle. Um, it is a book that we will treasure, I will treasure, you will, I hope, treasure, and it will be around for many, many years to come because it does contain so much of Ackle Island in it. So I congratulate Mary and I wish her very, very well with the book. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of this warm afternoon. John, thank you very much for those lovely words. Um, our next speaker is Anne Burke, and Anne is from Dua here. Anne, if you'd like to come up to the steps. And Anne's mother, Brigitte McNulty, was painted first by Mary Howie here in Achill, and her family remained very good friends with Mary, and she was a, a wonderful contributor to Mary J's book. So here's Anne. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and I would like to begin by thanking Skull Opera for inviting me to attend the launch of this book and to say a few words about my mother, uh, her, this, her, my mother's connection with Mary Howie and her family for over 50 years. I have very fond memories of conversations that I had with my mother about her lifelong his, uh, friendship with Mary Howie and the places they visited. Um, they, placed, they visited in several places in um, Delphi, places in Galway, Mayo, and Mary Howie did some of her paintings there. My mother would be delighted that this uh, period of active history is now encapsulated and documented in this book. In 1982, my mother and my sister Kay both visited Mary Howie at her home in Belgium, and they had a wonderful reunion. They both had many fond memories of their trip. Um, and of course, um, that was the last time that they met because in 1984, Mary Howie died and in 1986, my mother died. I was very um, happy to be of assistance with, to Mary when she visited me at, her, at my home to uh, discuss and to view the many pieces of memorabilia that have accumulated over the years. Mary, I would like to congratulate you on all the hard work and uh, research that you've put into this book, and I wish you every success with it. Thank you all very much. Gurumila Mahagat and for those lovely words. Um, our next speaker needs no introduction. It's John Twin McNamara. And I'll invite John up to the stage here on the right-hand side. And uh, we have archival footage on our Facebook page, John, from 1985. And you're looking well then, and you're still looking well today. Fair play to you. So uh, to launch Mary J's book, book, book Apple Painters, which is available here behind me in the bush shelter, uh, here's John Twin McNamara. Uh, well, I heard you. 
Je wilt je kart naar koor, kan tussen je koperfotel als kwege. Als je blind je hen, wie moet je gier je allemaal koren moet. Als je tot pizza kan je, kan je ze dan ik moet als je koor naar drill. That is where have we come from and where are we going to? Now. Uh, I'm not going to, to say too much about the book. The book speaks for itself, so the launch of that will be later on. But I would like to refer to where ha have we come from and where are we going. And uh, I'd like to, to address everybody here as an artist, because we are all artists, whether we are working at our art or not and if we are not there is plenty time for to do that even i as an old fella uh, have time to to work a little bit at 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 art so i address you all as artists or budding artists now um, it would it wouldn't be right if we did not refer to where we are and how ancient a people we are. We go back a long way. I have a little thing here in my hand, if you can see it, it's an amethyst. And that goes back to more than 500 million years ago. And you can find that in Acle, right? The next thing, uh, we take a step forward to more than 5,000 years ago in Shreve Moor, where the megalithic tombs are. So then we move forward, and if we had more time, we could be here for the day, but we won't be. Uh, we move forward to the mid-1800s, uh, when our people, and I have to say this with all the strength and energy that's in me, when our people were evicted from the east side of the graveyard in Schlemoor and they came back here, there were 76 houses who were not evicted, or the people from those houses were not evicted on the west side of the graveyard. But those who were evicted, they came down onto the bog and it was the blade of grass in this village. And they built their mud cabins. And when we look around today at 230 of those magnificent buildings, we have to honor those great people and, and uh, honor where we have come from. They have worked from those humble beginnings with fist and striving and not with handouts. They have they traveled, emigrated, earned money from the cabins, have grown all those great, those great houses. And that's not only in Dua alone. There are 20 beautiful villages in Akil, on Akil Island, and 10 more on the other side. And that's one great big unit. So what, what I have to say is that we move then forward uh, to 1893 and Douglas Hyde and Conrad O'Gage. I would say on Rothersfair, uh, Bonnyu in Aaron Reeve. Agus is Fridge uh, Conrad O'Gage, a Hanik Nadini Shaw, Gaji on Hala. He's on show. The myth is a myth, a clahagum, venture non a haihu, dono chin. Agus a hashishid, skylakla, sevlin, mele ni ye the sejai. Now they saw, they sowed a seed then, and that seed fell on rich ground and is. We have the, the product of that today. We have the rich harvest, which is Skylakla. Okay? So, I could be here for, for a very long time, but I, I was reminded when I got Mary J's book, 
on page 10 you'll find that there's a there's a line in there which says artist artists and artistic people they can smell a waffler from a mile away now I am a bit of a waffler but I'm not going to go, go on too much further except to say to put a, put a few wrongs uh, right and the first thing I want to say is that in 1982 there was a big celebration in this village where, where the establishment of the fife and drum band was. And uh, over in my house over there, it's not far, you could throw a stone to it, uh, there were three old men which included my father. And talking about different things, this was recorded by the way by RTE, I think it was Harry Bradshaw, and talking about where we, where we were and where we had come from. And my father, Banner Shailen Arnhem, he had been involved in Skylarkler since he was about 13 or 14 years of age. And he kept referring back to this Irish college over here and Mrs. Weddall. And I thought he was putting it on a bit because we never heard this woman called anything but Mrs. Waddle, which was an insult to her. And uh, that was in 1982, and every day that I saw him after that, did you do anything about the music and the Irish college over here yet? And my mother kept saying, don't take any notice of him because he was 87 at that, uh, that stage. And then he, um, he died in January 85. And then I said, well, we have to do something about this. So this Skullakla is not, is, that's where it came from, not from me. I might have put out a Sweeney or something like that. But I want to put it across to everybody here that this is a Glushacht. It's the Glushacht on Fobel. It is the possession of the people. It is the people who bought tin whistles and the people who bought nine fiddles on the first day that it, that it started on the 6th of August, 1985. And those who have bought all the instruments since then and have encouraged the people to participate. That's, uh, to my mind, is what Skalakli is. And uh, then uh, we have just had John Dean here, and another element of Skalakli is writer's workshop. There's singing, there's writer's workshop, there's music, there's writers. And uh, the concept of that was that if we had a writer's workshop, and Nestrancheri at all and show a new to falcho war to the strangers I have to say you you're very welcome into a very welcoming place but I have to say that uh, the concept was that if you had a writer's workshop somebody would write about Kim our dua our bonahari our actual sound and if they published that it would maybe be published in America or somewhere, and it would spread the name of Ackle. Now, I want to refer to one person in particular, and that was, um, Ed, uh, uh, she was a lady by the name of Johnston from Derry, and she, she published her first book, and in that, she published a poem called the music eagle, and of course the eagle is associated, and that was all about the music, the eagle going around and hearing all the music. But most importantly, that poem, you'll find it, you can, you, you know, you're all Googlers. Sashivanani Google I, you know. Finish uh, Johnson and, and so on, and you'll find, you'll, you'll find this poem. But the three last lines of it are, I will pass unseen in music and mend the fragmented 
In other words, uh, they, and we are all fragmented, you know, that the, the eagle would, would do all that. So I think I have, I could be going on for a long, long time. Uh, and I'll be saying something later about Mary J's book. Uh, so um, I just say that all of you, from what I, I have seen of it so far, if you are an artist, it will help your art further. And if you are not an artist, it will help you to become an artist. Because that's what it's about. Encouraging people to begin again, as Brendan Kennelly says, begin again. And even if you only write four lines, or even if you take a pencil and make a little bit of a stroll and lead you on to painting, or if you take up a tin whistle and lead on to, to be a harp player. So, um, as I said on, in the book, on page 10 was, I know you're saying, he's a clobberer. Mashadun de vel a clobberer, shin brega tato ro. Well, I don't think I'm saying any, I'm telling any lie on what I'm doing here. So, uh, uh, because of the conditions and because of everything else, this is a massive celebration of 35 years and my greatest wish is that Skylachla will stand alone and continue long after I'm gone and that it will not be subsumed into any other organization in Akhil or beyond. So Shinan Major Thole Roagam Agam we we couple Lanoch Scrifi Agam on show Ach Toshi Fanishi the Mofoka Agus Vime Hon Hon Major Versi Gonoran Aro and the Strancheri the greatest and I maybe I maybe I will finish it with this uh, the the oldest song that we have in Eichel is called Kul Nabing and that was written about the year 1800 which is a hundred years, well able to add up, 120 years ago and or is it more? <laughs> 1800 it's two, nearly 200 years ago but anyway uh, there's a great line in that It's just an orche ex strangeri and uh, in, in 2010, a man wrote a beautiful poem called Ilan Akla. He was uh, he was from Connemara. There was a competition on, and he wrote that beautiful poem. And I, I, I was going to sing it, but I won't because of the rain. Uh, it's just an orchid strangery. So it's a welcoming place for strangers and a great place for locals. It's just an orchid strangery. Ilan Akla all in here. It's for Jahid Nishlefjan, it's Niglanta Sheva Thiel. Being glorn a dun, got coward from my bulwer a thaw. I call for Jarivna Strangery. Hugan Ilan Glasgow Small, that's only one verse, and you can. It's Fajr Liv Ea Hugel Oil. So, Shin, Shin, I made the Thalia Rog of Seth. They. They just cover the fuck like them. You know, they're on launch all their shoe, Tarish, Mary B. Which is in your clothes. For anyone who wants to listen to the full song, it's on uh, What's On in Apple from Sean Malloy and his Blue Flag Media. The whole song, you can listen back to it online. So um, now it is my pleasure to introduce Mary J. Murphy to you. And um, I suppose, uh, like John said, it all started with the Smoinu and Mary J. was inspired like other artists here in Apple. Uh, she tells me it's her last book, so uh, maybe we'll give the Smoinu to someone else out there now for the next book. Uh, because there's plenty of material if you have the time and undoubtedly Mary. Jay has put her time and energy into this wholeheartedly. So I give you now Mary J. Murphy. Thank you. I'm ready to spare umbrella. Can somebody help Sarah hold the umbrella? Um, just this way, um, a cordial. Uh, when I was talking to Tom Kenny in Kenny's bookshop in Galway the other day, he said he had a message for John Twin. And uh, the message was, brevity is the soul of wit. 
so Tom and Kenny told me to make sure I pass on that message to John. I did. We'll know by the end of the afternoon whether he um, took it on board or not. Um, I'm more delighted, actually, than you can imagine to be here this afternoon with you. I must begin at the beginning as it's the smartest thing to do. I remember John Twin telling me once that uh, Derek Hill told John Twin years ago, Derek Hill, as you, many of you know, painted here on Ackle, and he painted uh, Miss O'Flaherty, and he told John Twin about 30 years ago in Dublin when they were preparing a uh, Paul Henry exhibition, that Derek Hill said, first, I painted Miss O'Flaherty when I got to Ackle. So what I want to do here first this evening, before I thank anybody else official, is I want to thank my, thank my husband and my three children, because they got me through the book, they got me through the pandemic, and um, we, we rattled and battled along together, and we're all here in one piece together this afternoon. So first and foremost, before I even thank my host, I thank my husband and my three children from the bottom of my heart. Now, our host, Scalotte, thank you for um, hosting the book launch. Uh, thank you, John Twain. Thank you, John F. Dean. It's an honor to have a poet, um, an actual poet of your caliber, to be here to welcome our book. It's like bringing coals to Newcastle, or, you know, bringing, walking into a lion's den to have the cheek to come into Ackle of all places and talk about painting and painters. But something drove me to do it, and uh, it was an unstoppable urge, and it's been in my head for 10 years. So I just knuckled down and I did it, and um, once in all of our lives, whether we're painters, we're all creative, human beings, we're the only species that create. We make things nicer than we need to be just because we want to. So we're all creative people, and there is that then. Once in our lives, we all have to take one huge leap into the unknown for, for no other reason. We must leap into midair and see where we land. This is what I've done with this book, big time. I have left beyond my comfort zone. I'm now in midair. Let's see, let's see where this ship ties into anchor. But um, we, we launched the Evo Flaherty book here in 2012 with John Twain, so it's a double honor to have him launching two books. And there's one person missing here today, a lot of people missing belonging to everybody, but my mother isn't here today. This is the first of my books that she hasn't held in her hands or seen. So when I told my friend Judy Murphy in the Connacht Tribune, we were talking about her. Judy's mother has, is recently deceased as well. And Judy found this, um, I hope you're not all getting so feel free to sit in your cars into what we can call Ireland's first drive-in book launch. This is the quote Judy gave me. It's by Martin Rowe from The Sky's Window. And it's, uh, we hold invisible hands with those who have gone down in history. We cannot let go, they are holding us. So I feel my mother holding me this afternoon. And I hope all of you, holding you as well this afternoon. Now, I've just one page. If it takes a village to rear a child, it, it took an island to do this book. Um, my only business really here, apart from thanking my family, is to thank the people who cooperated and helped me doing this. All of the artists who were kind enough to trust me on an unknown mission, trusted me with their work, and you will see in the book um, the magnificent courage and bravery of people who commit their inner visions to paper, to sculpture, to poems, to books. They put their neck on the line, they get into that arena and they put their work on show. That's an extraordinarily courageous thing to do and one thing I have learned uh, in doing this book is to have um, more of an appreciation for people who take that leap and have that courage. The other person without whom this book wouldn't, wouldn't be what it is is Anne Burke because Anne and gave me access to her mother's private letters. Um, she trusted me. I mean, I don't know if a, if a little scribbler like me came to, the, came to my door at some point talking about my mother. Just think about how close to the bone that is. Would I trust them? But Anne trusted me, and I thank you, Anne, for that and all of your family. And it's a testament to you and to your family's friendship with Mary Howie, what we managed to unearth and translate from the book La Suris Dara. And I hope you're pleased with the book, and that is my, my gift to you for your trust in me. So thank you very much for that, Anne Burke. Um, this Evo Flaherty adventure started about a dozen years ago when Brendan Gannon and Carla Strand told us, told Jared and myself, 
that was a strong Carlistrand link with Ackle through Evo Flaherty. And since then, really, I've been excavating and pulling at her life. And in hindsight, it looks like this book was always meant to be. I didn't think there was going to be a second book about Ackle, and certainly didn't think there was going to be one about painters, because I might have forgot to mention I don't know anything about painting, and I don't know anything about painters, but I do know how to research, and I know how to talk to people, and I know how to read books, and I know how to um, follow a mission in my head to get something done. So that's where this book came from. The content of the book I take responsibility for. If I've left somebody out, I apologize. If there's somebody in there who doesn't want to be, it's too late now. Um, trust me, I did my best. If you find marks in it, that's, those marks are my blood, sweat and tears because that's what I put into the book. And the reason the book looks as beautiful as it does is down to my designer, my, my very own designer, Damien Goodfellow. Are you here, Damien? He did the four books with me. He's a superb designer. If anybody's looking for somebody who can turn their image into reality, he's the man to contact. I've been supported all down the years uh, by Ackle Tourism, everybody in Skala the Beehive, Vincent English and the Heritage Centre, all of the media who have supported the work, all of the people who are, um, are now stocking the books, I thank them for that. Um, I thank David Burke in particular and Tom Kenny because when I said I don't know if I quite have the guts to do a book about art and Ackle, they said, Mary, just trust yourself, just do it. What's the worst that can happen? Um, I'll get back to you on what's the worst that might happen. Um, I would also thank uh, Dr. Edward King for his art expertise and support along the line. Uh, John F. Dean, Anne Burke and John Twin, please sit in your cars if you're soaking. Sean Malloy and Blue Flag Media. Patricia Byrne, thank you for your writerly advice. Maria Gillen, Anne Tierney, Jimmy Laffey from Menlo Skahan my home place. Thank you all of my friends who've come here this afternoon. There's ukulele people here, there's writerly people here, there's Munchori people here, and there are friends here. Thank you for supporting my family and myself on this um, raw walter of a journey. And to people here from Carla Strand as well, thank you. Um, I'm from Menlo in East Galway. We've lived in Carla Strand for years. Um, but we've raised our three children here. We've been coming here for into our fourth decade now, coming here. So Akil is part of us, even the wind and the rain, because this is what Akil is like, you know, when the tourists go home for the one, one sunny week during the year. But that's what makes Akil so beautiful. It's capricious, it's unpredictable. It's why artists come here. The creativity comes from the solitude and you have to run in after the rain, you have plenty of time for thinking. And when it's not raining, there's even more time for thinking. So I don't know if anybody has defined what is the, the source, the cover of uh, artistic... I don't, don't even know how to describe it, but the, the thing, the thing that brings people here to write and read, and just people who want to rest and relax and have family holidays here, as we did as well. Um, I hope now I'm not forgetting anybody, but I'm hyper-conscious that people are getting wet and cold. So I hope I have thanked everybody. Um, I'm, I remember that Gerald Daw said that what makes Ackle so special, it's something really very simple, it's just solitude. And in that furnace of quiet, that's where creativity, creativity comes up from the ground. He said it's when people come back here or come here for the first time, it's like a memory, a forgotten memory. Suddenly people realize, yes, this is the place, this is where I need to be. So I'll just conclude, if I may, by um, referring to a poem by uh, Mary Oliver. I'm very keen on her poems. And there's one of her poems called, If I Had a Boat. And I love boats and I love water and I love sailing and I love everything to do with the oceans and all the grandeur and the landscape and the beauty that surrounds us. But in this poem she talks about if she had a boat, she didn't want a boring boat, she wanted one that would go towards the rocks and try and touch them and sail towards the dolphins and just in every way have a boat that she couldn't steer. That, I think, is what I was looking for when I wrote this book about Ackle and Painters. It was and remains to be a boat I couldn't steer, but I'm really interested in seeing on where it brings me. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming here this afternoon. Thank you. Um, just to say that uh, Mary Jay says uh, it's, uh, that I launched another book uh, which she published that was I wouldn't say Evo Flaherty, Miss O'Flaherty, respectfully, never heard her called anything else, Miss O'Flaherty's book. But before that, I, I was given the honor of launching another book called 
Jones Midge Vrega on by Porrick Shoy in 1980. And now we have come to the launching of uh, this, this great work. And uh, I would just say to everybody, get a copy. And if you don't read it, put it in the attic. And let it be there for those future generations to read. Because it's a magnificent, I, from what I've seen, I only got the book the other day. Uh, so it's a magnificent production. And it will, it's an inspiring book. And you will all be, in, anybody who buys it and reads it, will be inspired by it. So, Les uh, Shin, Shorty me on Lower. So, Ta on Lower, Shorty Inish. August so Brunthanus Berg Agum on show uh, the Mary J. A little diamond. We used to call these diamonds when we sold them. And it's it's going back to the five hundred million years. So that's all I can give you, Thank Mary you. J. So you can keep that in there. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. So as Mary J says, our first drive-in book launch. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks guys. Thank you very much. Cheers.